Good evening everyone, Spazzy Dragon here, Syndromes, and today we're going to have a pretty special video. This is not exactly a 15 minutes of discovery, and this isn't exactly a tutorial. Today I want to show you a specific type of gameplay which has personally helped me to stay pretty much sane over the years on Disco, and which, in my opinion, makes the game a lot more fun to play. But, before we begin, I just want to sh point out that we're currently running at a completely new rig! Courtesy of a guy in my town which was closing his PC shop and decided to, you know, sell off one of his used computers for me. And this thing runs fantastic. I'm uh, currently recording at 60 frames per second, which is awesome as hell, so expect a lot more you know, combat-oriented videos from me in the nearby future. Anyway, as you probably guessed from the, the video title itself, today we're going to talk about um, closed economy characters and the hardcore mode. And uh, in order to do that, as you will see in a moment, I've actually created a new account just for this task. And I suggest if you want to try this, you do the same, because it makes things a lot more easier. Anyway, before we begin, I just want to point out that this sort of gameplay is not for everyone. Um, this is basically something you might want to do if you feel the Discovery Freelancer in-game isn't as challenging for you, if you really, like, for you. And um, at the other side, this is just something, you know, not everyone is... You know, you know, meant to do. Uh, I'm getting a bit mixed up here. Anyway, it might be fun for you, it might not be fun for you. Look at this video, choose yourself, and see if you want to try this or not. Anyway, a bit, a bit of a backstory here. Uh, if you've been here for a few years, then you probably already know what closed economy characters are. Um, I think back in the day, Zap was the first one to make these characters a bit more popular. And as time went by, uh, people start started doing that more and more. It kind of saw a decline the, uh, in the recent year after the new mod expansion because, you know, all the goodies and shit. So today I want to just show the, uh, show the new players uh, how to combine this with the Iron Man mode for Discovery and uh, hopefully uh, get a far more interesting gaming experience out of the whole mod. But before we do that, we need to create a character, so let's just do that. Um, there's two ways to do this, and by two ways, actually, there's one way that I usually do, which for me has become pretty interesting, because I don't even know what kind of character I'm going to make before I do it, so let me show you exactly what I mean. Okay, here we go. So, right now on the screen you should see two tabs, and I i don't know how well this I broke it. I can't switch away from this tab. Okay, hmm, okay. Anyway, if you want to make a new character, I suggest two pages. Uh, one is the Seventh uh, Sanctum page, which you can see on the screen right now. I'm going to link to the site in the video description so you can tr test it later. As you can see, you can choose a category, and the one that interests us in specific is Science Fiction Starship Cruise. I usually just go with one character, just for the sake of making it uh, a bit more easier for me. And uh, this is where you can choose your own way how you do it. You can pretty much click a few times and pick a random character. Or, if you want to have some sort of control, you can actually just keep clicking and until you actually find something uh, that is interesting. The Athletic Grim Starship Navigator sounds a bit boring, and in the Incoherent Quartermaster as well. Young Manipulative Computer Technican Infected with Nanites. Okay, that sort of makes sense. The young, odd, senior archaeologist. Well, this <laughs> seems uh, sort of familiar, although it, he wasn't young. The plain, persistent, greedy, xenogelizist... <laughs> English. In love with someone of another species. Seems legit. Okay, you get the idea. Right. 
We can pick any sort of character from here if you want. The miserable medical technician coping with mental illness. Sir, why not? I, I mean, this is the sort of character who would just gather up some money, buy a civilian shuttle and go fly. Anyway, after this we are going to actually go for a name. Uh, for this we're going to use the link you, can, uh, you will be able to get from the video description. We're going to use... Yeah, masculine. Why not? First name, middle name, and English. Depending on what you... I mean, if you want to get a German... Uh, <laughs> fuck. English. Seriously, what the fuck? Um, if you want to make a Rhinelander, then obviously you want to take um, German. If you want to make a Kosarian, then it's obviously going to be either Japanese or Chinese. And so on. So let's just um, generate a name for us. Quinn Gordon. That sort of sounds familiar, I don't know why. Brad Dexter. The Dexters were a player faction. Russell Hubert. Lacey Fran. Haywood Villy. Okay. Aston Martin. Seriously? Oh wow, this thing sucks. Boneface Daryl. Yeah, Saxon Carson. Alright, now we have figured out the name. I'm not going to actually create this character, but, um, you'll see why. Uh, oh my god, I forgot the character's name! Jesus Christ. Alright, Saxon Carson. I should note that my um, short-term memory is pretty shit, so this is one of the reasons why I don't usually rehearse these videos. I just make them up on the fly. Anyway, uh, the idea here is very simple, actually. We are combining two types of gameplay. One is regarding closed economy characters, which is exactly what it sounds like. Everything you do in game is going to be done on one single character. You can make only one single ship. And this is going to be it. This is going to be Saxon Carson, the whatever. And uh, you can't send any money from uh, to this character from your bank. You can't send anything from it to your bank. Everything that happens on this character is going to happen on this ship. You can't make more of these ships. The That's the challenge. Secondly, we have the Iron Mode character, um, Iron Man character if you want to call it that way. Uh, that one is uh, pretty simple as well. Um, as time goes on, you're going to accumulate wealth in the form of ship, uh, of your ship type and your money, obviously, and your equipment, whatever. At some point, you will probably die. When this happens, you are going to send all of your money away. This is the only um, only moment when you can actually send and draw credits. And you are going to completely delete this character, remake it with the same name, and use the civilian restart closest to the location you died in. Then you are going to draw back the exact amount of credits that you lost. It means that every time you lose, uh, every time you die, you will lose all of your equipment and your ship. Now, obviously, you can uh, sort of choose a, a bit of a lighter version of this gameplay, and by that I mean you might want to say uh, you might want to sell your ship for a smaller ship, you know, get like 50% back and roleplay as if you salvage the wreckage of your previous ship. I don't want to do this sort of thing, I would just rather kill the character. And that's pretty much the combination. We are using a closed academy character with a Iron Man mode. So why the hell would you do this? What exactly is fun in this sort of character? Well, first of all, you start from the very basics. You start from the very beginning. Uh, depending on what sort of backstory you chose for your character, you are going to play it. I mean, I could be some guy who inherited some money, bought a ship, uh, th thought life is going to be easy out in the dangerous wilds of Sirius, only to get my face punched in. Right? Sort of makes sense. 
Oh, and obviously, if you really want, you can just go Iron Iron End mode, just Insanity mode, and actually kill off your character the moment your ship explodes, and make a roleplay story about it. Just how the hell someone so unlucky ended up dead. Anyway, so the very basic idea here is see what kind of roleplay can you get from scratch. I mean, this is a completely new character. You're not using a restart and funding yourself from the bank. This is a completely new character. Uh, everything that's going to happen to this character is actually going to impact his story, right? And obviously, depending on what happens, he... yeah, I suppose this is a good thing to point out. You can actually lose because if you end up dropping below the amount of money you need to get for a civilian shuttle, it, technically you can lose. And the guy's just going to be poor as fuck and probably he's going to, uh, you know, die a horrible death. But uh, you could always roleplay that the civilian shuttles are pretty much like the disabled, the, um, I don't even know how to call them in English. Uh, they were pretty much like carts back in the Soviet Union. Uh, veterans with disabilities would get a... Nah, sorry. Would get a government-funded car. Um, very cheap car, obviously. And which they would then have to return at some point when they're either too old or whatever. This is the same idea, right? Uh, you can, you can uh, roleplay that the civilian shuttle is something that every single spacefarer is given uh, and is to be returned when they get a better ship of their own and yes yeah, something like along that line anyway so again we are back at the initial question why the hell would you want to do this okay imagine you've played this for a few days and you meet two pirates both in uh, very heavy fighters obviously uh, this would normally count as a PvP encounter because, you know, pirates. You're not... Uh, well, if you're playing a normal character, what is the first thing that go comes to your mind? Kinda, can I take these guys on? Can I kill them? When you're playing a character like this, the first thing that comes to mind, oh shit, I might lose my ship, and I might lose all of my things. How? Is there a possibility, like, how much am I risking right now to lose my ship to these guys? Is there a better way I can, is there any way I can get away from these guys by not dying? And that is the brilliance of this sort of roleplay. You tend to really reconsider doing stupid shit, because it does end up with all of your stuff being deleted. I'm not being, I'm not talking about, uh, um, having your ship blown up and just selling off whatever stuff you had and selling it off to a bank. No, I'm actually talking about deleting your character without refund if it dies. Like, if it loses the ship, you're going to lose the ship. You're going to keep any free form of money you're going to have, but, you know, that's still the case. And, yeah, this makes Discovery, any sort of interaction within Discovery Universe, a lot more hectic. Because you instantly start to think about, you s if you know that the guy is very good at fighting, like out of roleplay, you know that guy is good at PvP, then when you meet that guy in game, you're not thinking about him as a PvP player, you're pretty much being very concerned about the, uh, the condition your own ship is in. I don't want to lose my ship, and that is a very, very nice way to get invested in the game. It's a very... I would even say it's a completely advanced version of the immersion you would usually get from this sort of game. It's still a roleplay game, yeah, obviously, but when you can actually um, lose your stuff, and you can basically lose all of your uh, time you spent online just to acquire some sort of transport or something, one false move, one wrongly said word to the pirate, and yes, that is exactly what is going to happen. Seriously, if you want to teach yourself humility, you might want to try this. But that's not the only thing you can uh, uh, teach yourself from this sort of gameplay. Let's talk about self-control, because this is a very big thing. Uh, as, you uh, as you might understand, the biggest problem with this sort of gameplay is 
actually following the rules you've set yourself. I mean, uh, it's very easy to die in Discovery, and not just the players, right? I mean, uh, you've fallen asleep, or, y you know, you all tabbed while flying in a trade lane, and you smacked into the planet. Or, even worse, um, some of the moments I had, I was taking the lane and I got ram killed by NPCs. Well, okay, what happens if some guy just shoots you without any sort of roleplay? He broke the sort of rules, right? You're still dead. You still have to delete that character. And the problem here, the biggest problem with this sort of gameplay is forcing your, yourself not to say, this doesn't count. You can't say that. You have to stick true to your own limitations. The, the rules that you've placed in front of that character at the very beginning, you have to follow. Because as soon as you do it once, as soon as you do it once, as soon as you say, yeah, doesn't, that doesn't count, I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to keep the ship. It doesn't count. I, I shouldn't have died. That was a game glitch or that guy was breaking the sir rules. Yeah. As soon as you do that once, every single time that you are going to die, you are going to try to find any reason, like any single excuse not to delete this character. And yeah, that is un understandable, but this reinforces, this teaches you how to gain self-control. Oh, and obviously it's fun as well. Now, uh, some of the pro tips uh, from my own previous um, experience from these characters is pretty simple. First of all, um, try not to make a miner, or actually try not to make a character which would gain money too fast. Because one of the things that makes this thing fun is the fact that you're always looking for money. You're always accumulating wealth in the, w in the sense of, I might lose this ship at any moment and if I do, I need to have enough money to get myself back on track. So I can continue whatever I was doing, whatever I needed this ship to do. Right? So, that is pretty much the case. The second one is actually pretty simple. If you're going to do this for the first time, get a friend with you. Because, you know... It really depends on you and how you view the game or what makes the game fun for you. As already said, this is not for everyone. This sort of gameplay style is not for everyone, obviously. But if you're new at this, you probably don't want to do this alone because it's always easier to do it with, uh, with a friend of yours, right? And so, yeah. This is uh, pretty much what I would usually do once in a while. I would make a closed economy iron mode character and it is fun. It is actually fun if you do it right and if you're lucky enough. And well, that's pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you might want to try this at some point, maybe. But if you want to see more uh, actual video footage than just me flying around New York, I have no idea. I started talking, I have no idea what the hell was going on. If you want to see more gameplay fo uh, f footage, then I suggest you take, a, uh, take some time to look at my YouTube library. And there's uh, two parts of the video called Losing is Fun, The Adventures of Petit de Capo. That was my one of my first attempts to make a video about these sort of characters, and I hopefully captured the thrill of it. Thrill of it, thrill of it. Eh. Anyway, this is Spazzy Dragon from Discovery Freelancer, aka Syndrams, and I hope you'll enjoy this video. Chaios!